Good evening, everybody. I am delighted to welcome you all to our Art in Flux event, Flux Live Autonomy. This is our third ever live event, and it's a very special one as it has been selected to be part of the Arts Electronica Online Festival in collaboration with the Stars European program, representing the UK media arts community under the Garden of Earthly Delights. Art in Flux has decided to focus this event on the concept of artistic autonomy. This concept is understood as independence and authenticity in creative decision-making processes, presenting a key factor which our organization embraces. At Art in Flux, we particularly support independent artists whose diverse creative practices are characterized by artistic autonomy. Flux Live Autonomy is a live stream event curated by myself, Maria Almena, featuring an introduction to our organization, as well as three live video tours by the Flux co-founders. The theme Autonomy serves as a framework to discuss the organization focus on independent creative practices. As an artist-led organization, we have chosen to present our own practices to show the link between them and our organization's curatorial remit. Alongside our program for the live event, the FLAX team have curated a virtual exhibition designed by Afra Shemsa, which will be available each day of the festival to be explored on your own time through our website artinflaxlondon.com. The exhibition presents our organization to the public and showcase key works from the co-founders, bridging and creating new connection between the UK media arts community and the international one. Before we continue, let me to introduce myself and our organization. My name is Maria Almena. I'm one of the co-founders and curators at Art in Flux. I'm also an artist on my own right, as well as the creative director of the studio Kimatica. Kimatica explores the intersection between interactive technology, live performance, and the human body in order to create transformative experiences that aims to reconnect the audience with deep human emotions. Art in Flux London was founded in 2016 at Soho Gallery in London by the artists Oliver Gengrich, Afra Semsa and myself. Flux is a charitable organization committed to the furthering the development of the media arts community in the UK. As an artist-led forum, Flux offers a space for collaboration and exchange as key artists and organizations come together to profile their work. Through talks, events, performance, workshops and exhibitions, Flux brings these ideas to the wider public, providing a fluid platform to discuss strategies, processes and collective themes within the media arts. Flux is committed to the ever-changing needs of media artists working right now and will remain in a dynamic state of change in order to facilitate them. We would love to see more active media artists join us. My name is Oliver Gingrich. I'm a media artist, researcher, and creative practitioner, frequently working with the concept of presence, often using data such as brainwaves. With the art collective Analemma Group, we have been exploring visual representations of sound for the last 10 years. Our projects have been shown at Roundhouse London, Tate Exchange, at Tate Modern, and recently at National Gallery X. We're particularly interested in creating immersive participatory experiences. Art in Flux was founded as a forum by artists for artists. We grew from a loose forum of 30 plus artists into a platform of over 2000 practicing artists, all working with different technologies. A focus on underrepresented groups, such as the LGBTQ community, women in tech, and non-binary artists is at the core of what we do. My name is Afra Shemza. I'm a multimedia artist working with light, abstraction, and interactivity. I combine traditional sculpting techniques with the latest technology to create my pieces. My keen interest in modernism, my Islamic cultural heritage, my concern in the ecological crisis and creating art for all are all central themes within my work. As an artist and activist, I find ambitious ways to fuse methodologies of the past with new innovations to imagine what the role of art could be in the future. With Art in Flux, we have created a platform for UK media artists to work with institutions. So far, we have worked with the v &A Museum and National Gallery X, and many universities such as the Royal College of Art, 
Goldsmiths and Central St Martins. We have also published academic papers about our history with the Electronic Visual Arts Conference in London, and we are now on their organising committee. Now, we are going to share all the different types of events that FLAX produce. I would like to start with our social events. FLAX socials have been always been key to our organisation, providing an intimate and supportive environment for our media art community. These events are focused on a peer-to-peer -peer approach and are hosted to encourage networks and collaboration between our audience. They are focused on artistic practice and operate with an open doors policy for all media artists wishing to present work in progress and who are looking for some valuable feedback and advice. Since COVID, we started to create all our socials as online events, and this gives us the opportunity to extend our community internationally. We have hosted around 50 social events during the last four years, providing a space for more than 1,500 artists. We choose different themes for the socials, taking into account the needs of our artistic community. We never wanted for FLAX to be an exclusive organization. So in 2018, we started a new branch in order to produce and facilitate art and technology workshop for local communities. We wanted to help make art accessible to all and believe that by hosting workshop with local communities, families and underrepresented groups, we have opened our media art practice to the wider public. So far, we have created three workshop events, one for the Digital Design Weekend at v &A Museum, and two with the local art organization, ACABA. One of them, Aya, was recently selected for an Arts Electronica Award. Apart from our more internal social events by artists for artists, we're also hosting and curating larger public-facing talks. Our larger talk events are curated by one of the three co-founders and facilitate the exchange of ideas as media artists come together to profile their work. These larger events offer a space for the exchange of creativity, inspiration and support and center around key themes of our respective practice. As Afra mentioned, last year we partnered with organizations such as Royal College of Art, Ugly Duck, Laser London and Central St. Martins. This year, we are honored to have confirmed National Gallery X as one of our partners. National Gallery X is a new space between the National Gallery, King's College London, and supported by Google Art and Culture. The first of these talks, Gender Tech, focused on gender and media art, curated by myself and was held in June at the National Gallery X this year. Our upcoming event, Levitations, curated by Maria Almena, is an exploration of transformative media art practices it will be held on the 29th of September. Shifting Grounds, curated by Afra Shemza, will focus on the concept of cultural heritage in media arts practice. Shifting Grounds will be held on the 18th of November at National Gallery X. As we and all of our community are artists, it was a natural progression for us to curate and organize our own exhibitions. In 2018, we held our first show called Art in Flux Experiments in Media Arts Now which featured 20 artists, 15 talks, six performances, a workshop, and an open call moving image program. It was our own mini festival of media arts. This first exhibition was shortly followed by our second. Aya, Sign, was an exhibition of artists working with Islamic digital art, featuring the work of Sara Chowdhury, Ben Johnson, and Zara Hussein. Last year, we were invited to exhibit alongside the Computer Art Society as part of a landmark exhibition at the Royal College of Art. It built on the legacy of Event One, the first exhibition of computer art at the RCA 50 years ago, and showcased historical works from the Computer Art Society's collection alongside a contemporary selection that was curated by us. We featured an array of creative practices and new technologies such as VR, AI, real-time data visualization and live body mapping. And all of it was centered around key themes that we've been exploring with our community over the past few years, which we'll now go into in a little more depth. Now that we have shared with you who we are, why we exist and what type of events we create, 
we would love to share another essential part of our organization, our curatorial approach and the things we are passionate about. Today, we are going to be talking about flow, transformation and ecology, things that are going to be represented at our virtual exhibition Art in Flux Media Arts Now. The Flux team has created this virtual exhibition as an interactive environment designed by Afra Semsa that you can enjoy it in our website, artinfluxlondon.com. The exhibition presents our organization to the public and showcase key works from the Art in Flux co-founders, bridging new connections between the UK media arts community and the international one. I would like to start with flow. Defined as a mental state in which a person performing an activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement and enjoyment in the process of the activity. This concept of flow has been very present in many of the events we have curated. We like to explore how media art can help audiences to enter in a state of flow that deep creativity can achieve. By designing and curating exhibitions that create experiences as immersive as possible, taking the audience from one art piece to another in a cohesive and engaging way. We also relate flow to the concept of motion and we have curated many art pieces that help the audience to enter in a state of flow by being immersed in their movement in real time. Being able to transform one sensory experience to another is at the core of media arts practice and a key strand of our curatorial interest in providing rich, multi-sensory experiences. For the online exhibition, we'll focus on our own media arts practices and pieces that translate sensory information be it from sound into vision, as in the case of the NLM group, or from motion into light, as is the case with Thematica Studio, or from sound into light, as in Afrashems' work. A concern for the ecological crisis has always been central to the themes in which I explore my practice and in my curatorial work. As an artist and activist, I advocate for a seamless integration of sustainable practice into a media arts one. In 2019, I created a peer resource for artists working with technology who wish to be mindful of their environmental impact. I also created an event called Radical Ecology in collaboration with Julie's Bicycle, Ugly Duck and the artists Oscar Krajowski and Becky Lyon. As well as a theme I explore within my own practice, Anna Lima Group and Oliver Gingrich also work with these concepts, turning noise pollution data into stunning light art installations, which you will see in the exhibition. We hope you have enjoyed the journey we have taken you on to discover our organization. Now we leave you with the three live video tours by the Art in Flux co-founders, which will continue to explore the theme autonomy. Feel free to ask any questions on the chat and do remember to explore our virtual exhibition through our website artinfluxlondon.com. Also, we would like to invite you all to our next event Levitations in collaboration with the National Gallery X on the 29th of September, which is free for all. You can find more information about this event in our website. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us in our social media channels to stay updated with our upcoming events and exclusive news. We would love to have you as a new member of our Art in Flux community. Thank you. My name is Maria Almena, and I'm a Spanish London-based multidisciplinary artist. In 2008, I was awarded with a grant and funding to study fine arts at the University Arts of London. Since then, I co-founded Kimatica as well as Art in Flux, and I was also awarded with the funding from the Princess Trust program to develop my creative business. I've always believed in the power of collective creation and collaboration, and this is why I've dedicated my life to create art collectives. My art practice researches the juxtaposition of the physical and spiritual, the virtual and real, as well as the scientific and artistic concepts. I enjoy playing with visual perception, intending to transport the viewer into new worlds. I use experimental technologies as magical tools that help to dramatize the transition between different states of being. I use the human body as the main link to explore these ideas transforming, mutating, and searching for answers in our own canvas. Today, I would like to take you into a journey to discover the creative studio Kimatica, 
where I'm the creative director and artist, in collaboration with the software artist and technical director Nestor Rubio, as well as many other freelancers and regular collaborators. Kimatica is a London-based creative studio, exploring the intersection between the human body, live performance and interactive technology in order to create immersive transformative experiences that seek to dissolve the boundaries between illusion and reality. We research the crossroad between light, sound and movement, in which the human body becomes a link between the three, overlapping physical and virtual layers in order to create rich augmented realities. We explore concepts of human consciousness and perception, making these ideas of transcendence and sublime accessible to modern audiences. We are aiming to inspire reconnection with the magical thinking and the ethereal world to reignite subconscious primitive emotions. We offer our skills and visions to commercial clients and have been commissioned by British Council, TED Museum, Barbican Centre, Instagram, MTV, Marriott Hotels and many others. We also been part of many art, science and light festivals. At Kimatica, we combine light, motion and emotion to explore the limits of human perception. We focus on the creation of new media performances, interactive installations and wearable technology. But recently, we have also started to develop our educational program, as we feel it's time to share our expertise with new generations. We are committed to use our creative vision to help develop artistic experiences that can benefit the entire community. We research holistic approaches to the well-being of people and have worked with the London charity Torrance Heroes that support people with learning disabilities. We also collaborated with international charity Oceanic Global, helping them to create immersive experiences, promoting environmental awareness. We are constantly striving to develop new ways of integrating our creative and social vision. And we work closely with fellow researchers from different universities such as Greenwich, Ravensbourne and Goldsmith in London to find new ways in which scientific research can inform our experiences. our first ever new media performing piece, Simulacrum, in the Stockholm Fringe Festival in 2012. Shortly after, it was featured at Kinetica Art Fair and awarded a Winter Art Pride. This piece turned upside down the direction of our whole creative studio, technically and conceptually. Simulacrum explores the extremes of transcendental experiences using new media art to explore the combination of European shamanic rituals body tracking technology and trance-like techniques. This piece aims to explore new types of contemporary rituals that can connect with a Western audience, evoking the hypnotic space of psychedelic consciousness. Kimatica's team designs and create all the characters and costumes as well as the in-house software that controls the visuals. We like to have full creative control on the art pieces we design, so we can truly recreate the walls we have imagined. Nestor Rubio created the first version of our body tracking technology for Simulacrum. This tracking technology allows us to use the information obtained by computer vision analysis as input for the algorithms that create the visuals that are affected by the gesture of the performer. This interactivity adds another layer of expressiveness and liveness making every performance unique and unrepeatable.
2016, Tate Museum approached us to create a new art piece for their upcoming exhibition Art Gym at Tate Liverpool. We created Relax and Release, an interactive digital installation that encourages movement and play, helping the audience to reconnect with their physical bodies. A participatory experience where you are invited to take a journey through the states of relaxation and release, immersed in interactive visuals and ambient sounds. The ultimate objective of the piece is to connect with the more emotional and abstract aspects of the human body and mind, facilitating explorations of the body's movement without constraints or directions. We use our mapping technology to track the body's movement in real time where our visuals react to the different kinds of all these movements, rewarding interactivity between them. The more people interact, the more visual reward they will have. The visual outcome of the piece will be entirely created by audience interaction, allowing them to take part in the creation of the art piece. Since Tate, we created several iterations of this piece keeping the conceptual essence, but pushing the technology to achieve better interaction and immersion. Last year, we were commissioned by British Council and Jerusalem Light Festival, allowing us to create a new piece with interactive sound. We collaborated with sound artist Magic Door, who developed an interactive 3D sound system that it was synced with our visual system. This allows the audience to create not only 3D visuals, but also 3D sounds with the movement of their bodies in real time. We are currently looking to develop this piece further to take it into a full immersive space. I would love to introduce you now to our project Transcendence, a multidisciplinary practice-based research exploring how live performance art in combination with interactive technology can induce altered states of consciousness. This project is a continuation of our early performance simulacrum. It is inspired by the limits of human consciousness whilst exploring the power of ancient spiritual practices and using experimental technologies to create a synesthetic experience of altered states. Transcendence takes its audience onto an immersive journey through the subconscious mind by manipulating perception through the combination of interactive lighting and visuals, 3D, 3D sound design, physical performance, dance trance, live vocals, character design, and sense. With a team of psychologists, neurologists, technologies, performance artists, visual artists, and audiovisual designers. Transcendence is an interdisciplinary project that approaches uncharted terrain in both science and performance. The first sketch of this piece was showcased in Greenwich University at the International Psychic Conference Breaking Conventions in 2017. After this, we have produced several sketches, which have been featured at the Splice Festival at the Rich Mix Theatre and Art in Flux London Exhibition. In 2018, I wrote an academic paper about this research, which was published at EVA Conference. Our last sketch of this piece was developed in our research residency that happened at Waterman's Art Centre last year. Now, we are continuing researching how best to analyze the psychological and neurological impact of the piece with professors from King's College and Greenwich University. 
we are currently looking at how to create a fully immersive experience as well as developing the basis for the methodology design on the creation of these type of experiences that can be used for future generations. We are also creating a virtual version so we can reach people from all around the world with this project. I'm hoping you have enjoyed discovering Kimatica's work. If you would like to stay in touch, join our newsletter and social media to discover our latest projects and news. We are also getting ready to launch specialist workshops. So if you are interested in learning the insights of our creative processes, get in touch so we can send you further information. Thanks for listening. Hello, my name is Arthur Gingrich. I'm an artist, researcher, and creative practitioner. As a researcher at the National Center for Computer Animation at Bournemouth University, I focus on diverse media arts practices, including a focus on participatory art strategies and their effect on social connectedness among communities. For 10 years now, I've worked with the art collective Analemma Group on such participatory, immersive visual sound experiences. But I also work across a range of different media, such as photography, painting, light art, and neuro art. At my studio in Notting Hill, I frequently work in series, such as on my light art series, Refraction, where I explore the cycle of life through light reflections on a canvas. In my series, Android Mythologies, I look at representations of masculinity and posthumanism. Android Mythologies, an imagined retrospective, plays with the idea of kitsch, nostalgia, and romanticism. My series Post-Apocalyptic Angels looks at angels in a time after God. The series portrays angelic beings uncertain of their destiny or ontological meaning, existing in a state of constant questioning. The series has been shown in New York City at New York City Photo, the LA Center of Digital Art, and Morris Magazine. My research practice revolves around three key areas, post-humanist identity, which I just touched upon, as well as introspection and neural art, and finally, presence and participatory art, which I explore with the Analemma Group. As creative director, I have been working with holographic projections over the last 10 years. As part of the hologram company MDH Hologram, I had the pleasure to work on major projects, and I equally enjoy working with holographic technology in creative ways, such as exploring personal themes or the idea of presence. Presence, the concept of perceived non-mediation, describes the condition whereby the technology becomes secondary in the artistic experience, my research into the phenomenon of presence led me to focus on intangible phenomena, such as consciousness, which I explore through a focus on introspection and neuroart. My piece Aura presents audiences with the possibility to observe their mind, 
the power of concentration and relaxation on a holographic display. The piece Memoria was created in response to the tragic fire at Grenfell, Notting Hill, where my studio is based, and serves as a means of commemoration, inviting audiences to remember together. The crack, shown at the Event 2 exhibition at the Royal College of Art, invites audiences to learn about concrete as a key emitter of CO2 and the ability of concrete to absorb sulfur particles. Through playful engagement, the audience creates cracks in the wall. In my new piece, Zeitgeist, developed with Dr. Sharma Raman, we're looking at the concept of flow as a means for creative engagement. This is our art and research project Zeitgeist, and I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Sharma Raman, who will introduce the project to you. Hi, my name is Dr. Sharma Rahman, and I'm an artist and scientist. Um, I'm standing within our uh, participatory art and research project called Zeitgeist. Um, and you'll see that I'm wearing a brain sensing wearable that is detecting the flow state, which is a mental state where you're completely engaged and absorbed um, in a task. And we are doing um, this by getting um, myself and one other person or two or three people essentially to uh, collaborate together in a creative activity in order to reach that sort of flow state and that will change the color that is then being projected through Zeitgeist um, and it should result in us feeling more socially connected um, and yeah, being in this highly creative state of flow. Through these themes of presence, participatory art, introspection and neuro art and post-humanist identity, I hope I was able to give you an overview of my practice as a solo artist. I will now hand over to my colleague Evgenia Emmets, who will tell you all about what we do with the Analema Group. Analema Group is an art collective focusing on the relationship between sound and vision for the 10-year-long history in creative, immersive, participatory art experiences. The core collective of Analema Group are the artists Evgenia Emmets, David Negrau, Alan Renault and Oliver Gingrich, working internationally. Founded by the artist Evgenia Emmets in 2010, Analema Group has been created as a forum for collaboration and artistic research between art, science and technology. We are creating immersive experiences for our audiences focusing on such subjects as light, color, sound, vision and different relationships between them. The core of our art, our signature project Kima, has itself experienced many transformations in the form of creative collaborations, immersive installations and participatory performances. The late strands of the project are called Kima Color, Kima Noise and Kima Voice, but the core of the project spans back almost 10 years when we started to explore visual expressions of sound. Kima is derived from the Greek word kuma, which means wave and alludes to the concept of somatic patterns, waveforms that become visible when sound meets matter, such as sand or liquids. The project Kima explores these relationships between sound and vision digitally as immersive participatory art installations, where the audience becomes an active participant in the creation of the artwork. In the installation at the Union Chapel, we explored mathematical relationships between sound and vision through cymatic patterns with live sound improvisation. For the 50th year anniversary of London's Roundhouse, we created a 360-degree installation focusing on the human voice. Kima Wheel made use of machine learning algorithms to express nuances and the richness of the human voice, such as timber. One of our recent projects, Kima Voice, focuses on the mathematical relationships between human voices while looking at harmonies, intervals and resonance. Kima Voice has been exhibited at the Royal College of Art at the Great Exhibition Road Festival and the Barbican and has now been selected for the Lumen Art Prize. Another key project by the Analema Group is Kima Noise, an art and research project on the effects of urban noise on health and well-being. The research has been conducted in collaboration with the scientist Professor Steven Stansfield 
and was exhibited at Tate Exchange Tate Modern as a site-specific immersive installation framed by workshops, talks and an art film. With Kima Noise we are streaming urban noises in real time and inviting the audiences to design their own soundscapes through a visual interface. Sounds are captured from the vicinity of the Tate and can be rearranged by the audience as 3D sound trajectories within the space of the Tate exchange. A visual artwork allows us to experience noise through understanding of noise thresholds and how they might affect our well-being. Analema Group has been recently commissioned by the National Gallery X and U Digital Studio by the National Gallery to develop and create new artwork Kima Kala, inspired by the color palettes of some of the National Gallery's most important artworks. We created an immersive 360-degree video and sound artwork. Kima Kala can be experienced by the audiences at home, on their mobile, using headphones, as a 3D sound and video artwork. Working in collaboration with researchers and curators at the National Gallery, we continue to explore our understanding of color in new creative ways. Together, these projects show the diversity of different avenues to look creatively at the relationship between sound and vision. Kima continues to put our audiences at the center of visual sound experiences as participatory immersive art installations. Hopefully we were able to give you a good idea of our work. I will now leave you with some impressions of our practice with the Analima Group and hope to see you soon at one of our performances or installations.
I'm a London-based multimedia artist working with light, abstraction and interactivity. Since a very young age, I was surrounded with my grandfather's work in our family home. His name was Anvar Jalal Shemza, and he was a Pakistani abstract painter who came over to London in the 50s and studied at the Slade. My grandfather has been a huge inspiration to me and my practice. What excites me the most about his work was how he fused ideas of Western modernism with Eastern influences to create his own unique style. I also use modernism as a starting point in my own work. While studying fine art in London, I learnt how to create bespoke circuits and more about abstraction and movements like the Bauhaus. I thought it was beautiful that abstraction was seen as a universal language for the masses but didn't feel like it really translated very well at the time, as to the public it was a very avant-garde concept. I wanted to continue this exploration in my own practice. As a society, we're deeply immersed in visual images, and I thought if I want to create work, I wanted to create my own visual language for a contemporary audience, one which asked the audience to become actively involved in the work itself. My audience don't need to have any knowledge about my aims or concepts behind my work to enjoy it. My aim is that my work is enticing to the audience and that anyone, no matter what their age, education or background, they can still take something from the piece. Traditionally speaking, I am a sculptor. I work with wood, metal and plastic, and most importantly, light. I create handmade and bespoke interactive circuits that I solder myself in the studio. The circuits and lighting devices are embedded within the sculptures, which create work that responds to the viewer, live data, or the space around it. As an artist and activist, I explore the impact and legacy of technology on our world and advocate for a sustainable media arts practice. In using these technological devices, I am trying to imagine what the role of art could be in the future. The idea that art can change the world is perhaps a little outdated, but I use my work as a space to imagine future possibilities. My keen interest in modernism, my Islamic cultural heritage, my concern about the ecological crisis and sustainable practice. The seamless integration of technology within our lives and art for all are all central themes to my practice. I tend to work in series. Each series has a different aesthetic quality and a different conceptual framework. The composition series is based on a model of the solar system from the 1500s by Johann Kepler, who imagined that the structure of the universe was based on the platonic solids. I thought this was a fascinating concept because it highlights how abstraction and the platonic solids are central to our understanding of the universe and our place in the world. The connection between the viewer and the artwork is integral to Composition X, my first interactive sculpture. Depending on where the viewer is in the space, the lights in the piece respond and change colours, fading on and off over time. The Totem series has a completely unique aesthetic, using wood, perspex and LED to create these strange kind of hieroglyphics of the future. They look to a future where nature and technology come together in a seamless integration and imagine a world where there is no longer such a conflict between being natural and using technology.
The Diffuser series was the first time I used a reclaimed material within my work. All the pieces in the series are sound reactive and respond to the volume of the space around them. I really love working with sound reactivity because immediately my audience understand that there's a relationship between the sound that they're making and what's happening with the artwork. This creates an incredibly engaging dialogue between my audience and the artworks, bringing the artworks to life. The Symphonica series is also sound reactive, but this time I'm analysing the low, middle and high frequencies of the sound data and outputting this to a waveform across the LEDs. I was directly inspired by an exhibition that I saw of the Whitechapel Gallery. It was a hundred years of artists globally that had been inspired by Malevich's black square painting of the early 1900s, and I felt compelled to create my own work. My own Black Square series fuses minimalism and technology to create a meditative work for my viewer. Polychromy was the first collaborative artwork that I produced with my partner Mowgli. We had just moved into our new home studio and so the piece was really born out of that and an investigation into form, colour and movement. Polychromy has been exhibited at the V&A Museum and also the Royal College of Art. Post Truth and Beauty was a collaborative piece made with the artist Tim Murray Brown. The piece uses an Xbox Connect to analyse where the viewer's head was in the space and the lights in the structure changed depending on this input, as did a spatial audio composition that Tim had composed himself. The viewer glimpses part of a whole world, but never everything at once. The piece relates to notions of a post-truth era and what this could mean for us as a society. Skyforms combines geometry and nature, emulating the ever-changing sky across its animated lights. I have worked with many clients and brands to create commissions that are bespoke to them. From Champagne Louis Roderer's Heartbeats of Cristal to an infinity mirror installation based on global birth and death rates for Save the Children. The commissions really help me to take my practice into new areas and are integral to me as an artist. Current climate is the first piece that I have made about the climate crisis. It uses data visualisation from four different countries' news websites in the world, and the lights in the piece respond in real time to key words such as climate change and freak weather occurrences like droughts or tornadoes. The aim is to show when and how often we are talking about this important issue and highlight the fact that we should be talking about it more often. After having worked with technology for a number of years, I started to try and think how I could align my practice with one of my core values around sustainability. Of course, the most sustainable thing I could have done would be to stop using technology altogether. But I want my work to emulate life and technology isn't going anywhere. I want to use my work as a tool to imagine a better life where humans and technology exist together more harmoniously. In 2019, I was awarded the Developing Your Creative Practice grant by the Arts Council England, which allowed me the time and space to think more sustainably about the materials I use to make my work. With this project, I explored how to seamlessly integrate a sustainable practice within a media arts practice. I had a residency at a local maker space and took my two core materials, wood and plastic, and learnt new skills and recycling techniques to work with reclaimed timber and recycle my own plastic waste. 
What I think is really groundbreaking about this project was I took bubble wrap and plastic bags, which can't already be recycled, and gave them value by turning them into this unique marbled material. The skills I learned were invaluable to me as a sculptor, and I also developed a series of plastic workshops that I taught to other artists as well. The educational aspect of my work really came into being through this project and working with other organisations that are all a part of the climate movement. I really hope that through this project, I am able to create a space for discourse with the public and other artists about a more sustainable future. I published two academic papers with the Electronic Visual Arts Conference in London around sustainability and conservation in the media arts. I also created a website called www.art-ology.co.uk which is a peer resource for artists working with technology who wish to be more mindful of their environmental impact. I like to think that artists can be innovators and that we challenge perceptions not only of what art could be, but what life could be like. Thank you.